more than Trainiacs. Exciting stuff is inside this box, right? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm okay. Now, in this box is a new, a new rear Alto wheel because this entire time that I've had these here race wheels, I've only had this disc wheel and that causes problems if I'm ever at a race where this is all I've got and the wind picks up unexpectedly because in that case, I'd be getting blown all over the road. So what we're gonna do today is we are actually going to test this disc wheel versus this deep rear wheel, see how much the difference is in speed and whether it's worth it. Okay, so we're here at a pretty flat stretch of road and what we're gonna do is we're gonna do four separate rides. We're gonna do eight minute sections and the first section of eight minutes, I'm gonna do low power, kind of around 175 with this disc wheel. Then I'm going to turn around at four minutes into that eight minute section to make sure that we're nullifying any elevation change or wind change. So we're gonna go four minutes out, four minutes back, all at that 175. We're gonna do that again for another eight minutes, but this time at higher power at 225 watts. At that point, we're gonna come back here. We're gonna switch over to the deep section wheel that isn't the disc. We're gonna do the same thing. Four minutes out, four minutes back at 175. Do it again, four minutes out, four minutes back at 225. Now one thing to keep in mind is we've got this set up so that it has the same rubber, the same tire, the same tube inside both the disc wheel and the deep section wheel. So we're trying to make sure that everything that we possibly can analyze is the same. Now let's go do it. Got the wrench to pop the cassette off, but we can thank Urban Sprawl and the heating guys for having one. And we want to make sure that we get everything as similar as possible between the two wheels. So I'm even going to take the same cassette from the disc wheel and move it onto the deep section wheel so that even that is the same. We got the same grease between the two. So that's done. We got those four sections done. The easy ones were done at 176 watts and the hard sections were done at 225 watts. Now I don't really know how much difference there was. I didn't notice a huge one, but let's get back to the pain cavern. We'll compare the disc wheel to the deep section wheel. All right, Trainiacs, that worked. That totally worked. We have data here that matches exactly what I was expecting comparing the disc wheel to the deep section wheel. Now, I did this because there's a lot of people that think like if you want to be serious about your tri bike, you have to upgrade to a disc wheel. And what we've actually got here is 
proof that there are times that a disc wheel is a penalty. It'll actually cause you to bike slower. So let me show you the data here. So remember what we did. We did four different test sections where the first two were with the disc wheel going 175 watts and 225 watts. The next were with the deep section wheel going 175 watts, 225 watts again. Now the reason that I did higher wattages than I've done with say aero bar testing on a road bike in the past is because we know that, well, we'll just cut to Cam Wirth saying it. The other thing about a disc is, is really beneficial when you're going at least above 40k an hour, more like 45k an hour. So anything sort of less than that, you really should just probably go with deep section rims. So we know that a disc wheel isn't going to help you until you start getting faster. So that's why I increase the wattages. But I have that 175 watts in there as like, that's kind of, that would be like the low, really low end of my Ironman pace, like really, really low end, maybe towards the end of it if I was bonking. So for a lot of people, like say the average cyclist, that is going to be kind of a target wattage that a lot of people will be going after. So first I wanted to look at that average wattage, average power and speed that the average triathlete is going to go with. Does it make sense to upgrade to a disc wheel? And what we found out is we look at that lap where I had the disc wheel at 175 watts, bang on, I hit it with normalized power, I went 4.2 kilometers. And then we skip forward here to the next eight minute section with 175 watts where I actually normalized power was 177, so just barely, like marginally faster. But in this case, I had the deep section wheels, which are lighter, which are easier to handle in the wind. And in this case, I actually went further. I went 4.47 kilometers instead of 4.2 kilometers. Now that is an actual penalty on the disc wheel of over 6%. Now let's take a look at what happens when we increase the power to 225 watts. And this would actually be beyond even what I would do in an Ironman. This is around what I would do for a half Ironman. So this is what a lot of people might target for an Olympic or a sprint. Like still, we're talking quite, quite fast, faster than a lot of people would be going. And in the case of the disc wheel, averaging 226 watts, I went 4.95 kilometers. Averaging with the deep section wheel, 224 kilometers, I averaged less, 4.88 kilometers. So in that case, there's actually a benefit of about one and a half percent to the disc wheel. Now, why is this the case that the disc wheel is actually slower at slower speeds. Well, that's the case because the disc wheel is heavier, the disc wheel catches a lot more wind, the disc wheel thus throws the bike side to side a little bit more, so you're always just riding a little bit longer than if you were going dead straight. It's not until you get up to that 35 plus kilometers per hour that you really see a benefit to the disc wheel. So this tells you that if you are the average person that is doing a race that is going to average, say anything less than 40 kilometers an hour, and you wanna save your money by not having a disc wheel and then having to have multiple sets of different depths of wheels, you can go with just an average deep section wheel of say an 80 mil, a 60 mil, and if you're going less than 40 kilometers an hour, you're actually going to be faster than if you had that disc wheel. So this confirms what pains me to say it. Cam Worf said in our course with him where he taught the bike course on protriathlontraining.com and it confirms what we say in the new Bike Foundations, Beginner Bike Foundations booklet that we're creating that isn't out yet. Well, actually, depending on when you look at this. If you look at this immediately after the video is published, it's not out yet, but you can get a preview of it at triathlonterran.com forward slash beginner bike, where I discuss what are the best bangs for your buck 
at every single price point, at every single stage in triathlon that you should be considering upgrading your bike along with the bike training and how to create a training plan and all that. So you can get a free preview of that regardless of when you look at this. And then hopefully around early fall, that book is actually going to be out. So go check that out and don't stress about feeling like you've got to have a disc wheel, Trainiacs, unless you're like a total stud. This makes me think that maybe for Challenge Roth, I don't even bother with the disc wheel unless it's perfectly calm. Even at perfectly calm, I'm not getting up to 40K an hour. That tells me something. All right, go check that out. Triathlonterran.com forward slash beginner bike. And if you aren't yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button below. Later, Trainiacs.